Hello everyone, Golden Nova here, and it's time for another birthday gift video. For this one, we'll be doing it for the skilled and powerful Great Big Pillock. And he's tasked me with covering a deck piloted by another in Yu-Gi-Oh's long line of terrible dads. And as is a running theme among these fictitious fathers, legacy and the toxic burden it lays upon those who inherit them are a hell of a thing to deal with. And never has this been more exemplified than with ancient bloodlines, looking to reinforce the family's code and honor above any individual's expression of will. And the symbol of that control can be found in each family's heraldic crest. So when it came time to furnish Vetrix, patriarch of the Arclight clan, with an archetype to fit that twisted idea of family, who literally uses crests to empower and enslave his children, there was no better way to show that off than with these cards. Check your daddy issues at the door, cause we're about to dive into Heraldic Beasts Explained. Before we start the episode, Dueling Nexus has launched a makeshift campaign this month for the Nyx Fumo plushie. Gaze into her glorious visage, her dueling prowess, her stare that betrays a head emptier than any void. We've got until the end of the month to fund this thing, so don't delay. Not only does purchasing this get you a ton of freebies on Dueling Nexus, including credits, contributor time, and rarity tokens, all profits are being donated to Community Forests International, a non-profit organization focused on restoring forests in places like Canada, Zanzibar, bar and Mozambique. Get a cute plushie to add to your collection and help fund a good cause all at the same time. Thank you all so much for your time and now back to the video. So what's the deal with the heraldic beasts? Well, the main deck monsters are all level 4 and spread across various types and attributes that are each references to different icons and symbols that can be found in heraldries, the crests from old European dynasties that would represent a certain family. As an Xyz era deck, their focus is on enhancing that particular summoning method, with the main deck monsters strengthening or enhancing the Xyz with the spells and traps actually deploying your material. The Xyz monsters are all psychic for reasons I can't definitively pin down, but I like to think is indicative of how things like duty to your family and its history worm its way into your mind and sit there like some kind of psychic splinter, affecting you in ways you may not even be aware of. Especially given the abstract nature of many of these extra deck monsters. What is this? What does this look like? Heraldic Beast Aber Conway is a Wind Dragon monster with 1800 attack and 900 defense, and if this card is in your grave, you can banish another copy of this card from your grave to target a Heraldic Beast monster in your grave and add that target to your hand. This card represents the Barony of Aber Conway, and as a monster, it's... Wow, this is rough. Uh, you need to have two copies of it in grave to even do anything, and while we thankfully have a support card that can enable this, it certainly isn't ideal. If they wanted a recovery option, I certainly would have gone about it a different Abercon way. Heraldic Beast Amphisbana is a level 4 Wind Dragon monster with 1700 attack and 1100 defense, and you can discard one other Heraldic Beast monster to special summon this card from your hand. And once per turn, you can discard a Heraldic Beast monster to boost this card's attack by 800 until the end of the turn. This monster is based off the Amphisbana, a legendary serpent with two heads, one on each side of its body. That has a Hankering for ants, that wasn't expected. So we have a monster that's equal parts Xyz Enabler by way of that special summon, and beat down Bruiser since the boost gets it to a whopping 2500. Which is about as flavorful as it gets, I suppose. Uh, each head can focus on a different task. I'm actually kind of floored. I've never heard of Amphis Bane as being a thing up till today, uh, even though I should have, thanks to having already seen a giant hell creature with a dragon mouth coming out of its crotch. Never change, Zork. Heraldic Beast Basilisk is an Earth Beast monster with 1000 attack and 1400 defense, and after damage calculation, it destroys any opponent's monster that battles this card. This is based on the Basilisk and the Cockatrice, two similar mythical creatures that both turn their victims to stone, which is reflected in its effect. So, yeah, you've got monster removal off of any effect that summons your creatures, but that's basically all Basilisk does, and with such low stats, this may as well just be a themed Nudoria and taking archetypal cues from Bakura isn't a good idea. Heraldic Beast Burner's Falcon is a wind-winged beast monster with 1000 attack and 1600 defense, and when this card is summoned, you can make all face-up level 5 or higher monsters you currently control become level 4. This card is pretty clearly based on Falcons, but I learned the name is specifically a reference to Juliana Burners, an English writer whose subject matter included both falconry and heraldry. Funny how that works out. This effect is 
strange in a deck that doesn't have any level 5 monsters, which contributes to an overall feeling of mismatched effects, but does mean you can combine the deck with a number of freely special summonable monsters like Cyber Dragon or Instant Fusion, giving you some level of flexibility with your Exceed summons. In fact, Burner's Falcon is pretty suited for decks that are full of level 5 or higher monsters, so they have access to a rank 4 pool. It's a funny card to allow for some silly tech picks in other decks, but I am once again asking you for more cohesive support! Heraldic Beast Yale is an Earth Beast monster with 1000 attack and 1800 defense, and if you control two or more Heraldic Beast monsters, you can special summon this card from your hand. This is based on the Yale, not the prestigious school, but a mystical goat-like creature. This helps us to gain access to Xyz monsters, both within and without our archetype, that require more than two materials. We can summon Bujinki Amaterasu to recover your banished monsters, Evil Swarm Ouroboros for a number of utility effects, and Prime Math Mech Alum Burst to grab any of our level 4s, and it does help with getting a bunch of Link material too, for what it's worth. Other than that though, not a lot of utility, basically only being useful if you already have the material needed for a vast majority of already really good Xyz monsters. But with all the higher education it's got going, it'll be great for Trivia Night. Heraldic Beast Leo is an Earth Beast monster with 2000 attack and 1000 defense, and is based on the noble Heraldic Lion. During the end phase of the turn this card was normal summoned, it's destroyed, and when this card is sent to the graveyard from anywhere, you can add a Heraldic Beast monster from your deck to your hand, except a copy of this card. Notably, it doesn't care how it's sent to the grave, so while it'll replace itself after its normal summon self-destruct, this also applies when you... Oh, I don't know, uh, detach it as Xyz material. This does have a hard once per turn on it though, so don't get any funny ideas of sending multiples of these in a single turn. It's strong, but it's not Soul Piercer strong. But despite the limitation, I'm sure it'll be your main source of card advantage. Heraldic Beast Twin-Headed Eagle is a Wind-Winged Beast monster with 1200 attack and 1400 defense, and is based on the Double-Headed Eagle symbol. You can banish this card from your grave to target a face of Xyz monster you control with no material, and two Heraldic Beast monsters in your grave to attach those monsters from your grave to that face of Xyz monster as Xyz material. This is one of the unique strengths of the deck, letting you recharge the material of any Xyz monster. Castell can get another removal effect, Baguska can stick around for a bit longer, and you can even get more busted effects out of Dugaris. Getting this into the grave is going to be a big priority in your early game to ensure you keep all your threats topped off. Though, uh, between us, if I saw a double-headed eagle banish itself just to spite me, I'd be pretty threatened by that point. It would be like a play sequence directed by David Lynch. Heraldic Beast Unicorn is a light beast, that's new, with 1100 attack and 1600 defense, based on the, you guessed it, unicorn. And you can banish this card from your grave to target a Psychic Xyz monster in your grave and special summon it, but its effects are negated. Oh, so close to being a solid 1-2 punch when combined with Eagle. Unicorn would bring him back, Eagle gets it loaded with material, that kind of stuff. But with the effect negation, the monster is good for a little more than ranking up, and... I guess as Link Material. Eagle is still pretty good here as it can put material under that monster before ranking up so it has some proper fuel, but not quite as impactful as we all might have liked. Though, considering Kashira Sangra era is a thing, yeah, probably for the best. Good future proofing on that one. No notes. Alright, that does it for the main deck monsters, now it's time for the extra deck, and we'll be dipping a bit into the number archetype to do so. And remember, they're all going to be light attribute psychic types. First up, we have number 8, Heraldic King Genome Heritage, a rank 4 monster with 2400 attack and 1800 defense, requiring any two level 4 Heraldic Beast monsters as material. Once per turn, you can target a face-up Xyz monster your opponent controls, and this card's name and original attack become that monster's name and current attack, and this card's effect becomes that monster's original effect. Then, that monster's attack becomes 0, and its effects are negated and these changes last until the end phase. This card is a really cool payoff during exactly the time it came out when Xyz monsters were all the rage. Counter summoning this to effectively steal an opposing Xyz effect would be pretty bonkers, especially against cards like Big Eye. But now, it is very, very contextual, effectively only being useful during formats where Xyz monsters are running rampant. Like, maybe it forces Zeus's out, or Typhons if your opponent is running those, but aside from those specific edge cases, you're not going to get much value out of this. Keep an eye out for chances to use this in older formats, but let's just say that today, this heritage isn't making for a good foundation. But hey, neither is the actual heritage foundation. Zing! 
Number 18, Heraldry Patriarch, is a rank 4 monster with 2200 attack and defense, requiring any two level 4 monsters as material. Once per chain, during either player's turn, if two or more monsters with the same name are on the field, you can attach an Xyz material from this card to choose a monster among those with the same name and destroy all other monsters with that name. While this card remains face up on the field, your opponent can't summon monsters with the same name as any of the monsters chosen for this card's effect. And if this card is sent to the grave, you can send two heraldic beast monsters from your deck to the grave. This is kind of a mirror match slayer because it checks both sides of the board. So if you summon out a big boss first, you can designate your own copy once they summon out their version, wiping theirs out, and now your opponent can't summon it anymore as long as you have Patriarch. It's also a hilarious counter to decks like Cyber Dragon or Harpy Lady that have their monsters take on that name while on the field, and can even keep them from summoning a lot of monsters in general while that lingering summoning effect is in place, though not from everywhere. For instance, a monster treated as Cyber Dragon while in the grave could be summoned out from the grave if you have your opponent locked out of Cyber Dragon, but if you're summoning it from the hand or deck where that effect is not applied, you can summon that monster no problem. But the real usage for this card is actually a lot more proactive. Since our Xyz monsters love stealing effects and names, first you would copy the name, then use Patriarch to designate your own monster, blowing up theirs, and now they can't get that monster back. Oh. And the effect in Grave is pretty handy as well, setting up searches with Leo, a recharge with Eagle, and varying levels of preparedness with Abra Conway. This card covers a lot of ground on its own, but now I just wish I knew what in the heck it was. What's going on here? I'm saying it right now, if anyone can make sense of the symbolism of Big Ice Chunk with Red Swirly Vortex protected by Blue Metal Scythe, I'll eat my desk box. Number 69, nice, Heraldry Crest is a rank 4 monster with 2600 attack and 1400 defense, requiring any 3 level 4 monsters as material. When this card is special summoned, negate the effects of all other face up Xyz monsters currently on the field. You can target one other face up Xyz monster on the field, and until the end phase, this card's name and original effect become the same as that monster's. So in this case, the negate is permanent, so those Xyz monsters are stuck just being vanillas, but sadly only takes on the effect and name, so no attack boost, though I guess it's a better deal if the monster's effect you want to steal is small. Pretty much everything I had to say about Genome is true here as well, if not more so, since you want to be facing a lot of Xyz for that negation effect to be worth it. It's a real shame, uh, I was hoping the card with the funny number had more potential. Guess we're just gonna have to see if they expand the number roster in the future, and hope that number 420 is an improvement. Number Chaos 69, Chaos Nice, Heraldry Crest of Horror is a rank 5 monster with 4,000 attack and 1,800 defense, requiring 4 level 5 monsters as material. Though, as is the case with most Chaos Xyz monsters, the main goal is to rank them up from the base form. When an opponent's monster declares an attack, you can destroy all cards your opponent controls. Grand. And if this card has number 69 as Xyz material, it gains the following effect. Once per turn, you can detach an Xyz material from this card, then target a face-up Xyz monster your opponent controls. This card gains attack equal to that face-up monster's original attack, and if it gains attack this way, this card's name becomes that monster's, and it gains that monster's original effects until the end phase. Yep, your opponent will no longer be able to attack you without worrying their whole field is gonna go up in smoke, but its activated effect still only works on Xyz monsters. I'm sorry. But time has not been kind to this card, and with you already having to use extra material to summon the base form, the real horror is trying to find a home for the universe's least huggable object. Seriously, is there a point on this monster that doesn't end in a giant spike? Alright, that's all the monsters, now it's time for the spells and traps. Advanced Heraldry Art is a normal spell card that targets two heraldic beast monsters in your grave and special summons both targets. Immediately after this card resolves, Xyz summon an Xyz monster using those two monsters only. Yup, it's a free Xyz summon of any rank 4 you could ever want just by using Yarded Heraldic Beasts. That's actually pretty good. As long as it's generic or you can find some specific Xyz that take advantage of our existing types and attributes, you've got yourself access to another power player. It's a great follow-up to cards like Heraldry Patriarch, but the background just confuses me. Why on Raw's Green Earth does this card not only have what appears to be the Dark Magic Circle, but also Spellbinding Circle? What strange things are you trying to infer here, game? Charged Up Heraldry is a normal spell card that tributes a monster to special summon two heraldic beast monsters from your deck in defense position. Also, you can't special summon monsters from the extra deck for the rest of the turn after this card resolves, except Psychic or Machine Monsters. That 
Sounds like an odd decision, we have no machine monsters to speak of whatsoever, but like with most things, the anime sheds some light on this decision, as a machine is the primary extra deck type of choice for the Arc Light siblings. For our purposes, this gets a Leo out of our deck so we can get that search post Xyz summon, Eagle to recharge our Xyz, or two Aber Conways for that recycling effect. And hey, that's two heraldic beasts you've got, so Yale is live! This is a great way to get your material on board, but why in the world did they put a restriction on this? You've seen the Xyz monsters we can make. It's not like we're breaking out in FTK. The worst we're gonna do is summon Zeus, which we can thankfully make under these conditions. But if you do insist on playing this in the deck, uh, make sure to keep a couple batteries on hand. Otherwise, they're not gonna be very charged up now, will they? Heraldry Reborn is a normal spell card that targets a heraldic beast monster in your grave and special summons it. Uh... Yeah, it's an on-theme Monster Reborn. Doesn't really do anything except get your monsters back, with the best being Leo, because you get that search again. It's a good search target off of another effect we'll get into later, but on its own, not much to write home about. Except for the issue with the crest blocking out most of the stuff happening on screen. You think it's being watermarked? Did Konami not pay the arc lights enough to use the image? Augmented Heraldry is a field spell card that keeps psychic type Xyz monsters on the field from being targeted by spell or trap effects. Once per turn, you can discard a Heraldic Beast monster to add a Heraldry spell or trap card from your deck to your hand, except a copy of this card. Ah, see, Reborn did come in handy, but you can't normal or special summon monsters during the turn you activate this effect, except psychic type Xyz monsters and Heraldic Beast Monsters, even if this card leaves the field. Oh, uh, well, there goes a little more utility from Charged Up Heraldry. Now we no longer can make those machines. And yes, this does count before and after using that effect, so no trying to cheese it. The protection isn't even that encompassing either. Not protecting it against monster effects, uh, bites. So I'm honestly wondering if this is even worth playing. Do the designers know what augmented means? Have they been playing so much deus ex that the word has no meaning? Augmented means the card's supposed to improve the theme, folks. Heraldry Change is a normal trap card, and when an opponent's monster declares an attack, you can special summon a heraldic beast monster from your hand, then end the battle phase. Hey, it keeps your opponent from closing out the game, that's not nothing. The monster being vulnerable to any main phase 2 shenanigans is unfortunate, and needing to have that monster in hand means this can get a bit bricky, but we don't have much of a choice. We're playing heraldic beasts after all, we need all the help we can get, and we can't really do anything to change that. Heraldry Record is a counter trap card that can be activated when an effect of an opponent's Xyz monster is activated by detaching its own materials. Negate the activation, and if you do, destroy it. Now, for all the guff I've given this theme, it may surprise you to know that this has had a brief window of competitive viability. Xyz monsters were all the rage, and in a time before Solemn Strike, a free way to stop Xyz effects, as opposed to the discard from Divine Wrath, was looked upon very favorably. Now, as Xyz started dropping in saturation, this too has become less desirable, which, yeah, sounds about right, for the record. Alright, so that's all the heraldic beasts, but what do we do with them? Well, I hate to say it, but this is about as rank 4 of an engine as it gets. At least, insofar as what the deck will allow. With access to only Psychic and Machines off its best enabler, it's pretty slim pickings. And our own playstyle hinges on our opponent playing one of several available extra deck card types, so consistency isn't going to be our biggest friend. We'll need to find ways to turbo out our material without resorting to our own support so we can utilize the wider pool of rank 4 options. Maybe even some that'll let us win the game. So what can we play to help them out? Well, the first stop on our trip will be adding other level 4 monsters that are just begging to be used as Xyz material, and we have a wealth of options to choose from. Photon Thrasher is a free special summon once you're starting out, and Goblin Berg lets you drop another monster right out of your hand. And they're both searchable by Rota. But if you want something a bit more machine-flavored, Tin Goldfish is also here to help. Otherwise, Kage to Kage can jump out of your hand whenever you summon one of the Heraldics, and that's easily searchable by another rank 4 option, King of the Feral Imps. But if you're looking for something a bit more modern, the Phantom Knights of Shade Brigandine pops up as an enabler every now and then, and of course, we can make great use of it as well, especially with another theme we'll get into very soon. And while it takes a couple of garnets to make it happen, Super Heavy Samurai Prodigy Wakaushi can also single-handedly make us a rank 4. You scale it, use the Pendulum Effect to scale Monk Big Ben K from your deck and summon Wakaushi, and use Big Ben K's Pendulum Effect to grab Soul Gaia Booster. You equip and summon the booster, and there you go. Two level 4s without you normal summoning a thing. Yeah, as long as you haven't played any spells or traps, that is. 
but arguably the best support we have on hand is the spirit monster, Sakitama. This little goober did see occasional play in Exosisters, and that's not without good reason. Extra normal summons are pretty good for making rank 4s as it turns out, but we can use its on tribute effect to our advantage too. Just use it as fodder for charged up heraldry, and it'll go right back to your hand whether that card resolves or not. Take that, Ash Blossom! Before we get into our Xyz text though, I want to take a quick detour to talk about Gravity Controller because it absolutely slaps when paired with Heraldry Patriarch. You start by Xyz summoning Patriarch to the Extra Monster Zone specifically, then link it off for Gravity Controller, which will trigger the Double Foolish Burial effect. Kinda like what people would do with El Shadal Construct when playing the combo-oriented version of that deck. Sadly, we can't Link Climb with it during the same turn we summon it, but it is a Psychic Monster, meaning we can still summon it under Charged Up Heraldry. While the theme can access the rank 4 pool, since our best enablers lock us out of everything in the extra deck other than psychics and machines, we'll focus on some of those for now. With rank 4 psychics, we only really have two options. Our on theme cards, so no need to go over those a second time, and time thieves who need no introduction. Though we do have a video for that, if you do. All their Xyz monsters are psychics, so charged up heraldry doesn't hold them back whatsoever. And heck, all their main deck monsters are designed to support rank 4 spam anyway, so they're a match made in heaven. Right down to Bezel Ship detaching Leo from your Xyz monsters to get extra material, and triggering Leo's search effect in the process. In fact, a lot of our Time Thief main deck monsters are machines as well, so we're just gonna jump right into the machine Xyz monsters we can make. And a big one is Springan's Merrymaker. Its materials are completely generic, so we can totally go into it. Throw Gigantic Champion Sargus on top of that, then use it to grab Therian King Regulus for a negate. This does best in the Time Thief build, since it has machines coming out of its ears, but in purer builds, you might need to slip some machine tech into it to make this work. Surprisingly, rank 4 machine Xyz monsters aren't very commonplace. There's, of course, Gear Gigant X, but in a deck without any machine monsters, we're not going to be making much use of it. But there is one that can help us access our higher ranked monsters. Number 27, Dreadnought Dreadnoid. It is hilariously telegraphed, but if we can run it over a monster, you'll get a free rank 10 or higher machine at the end of the battle phase. Some of our best options are Gustav Max to blast away the last few life points we need to win, Super Dimensional Robot Galaxy Destroyer to ruin the average Labyrinth Player's Day, and while we won't get all the bonus effects of Super Quantal Met King Great Magnus, especially if we summon Dreadnought Dreadnoid with Advanced Heraldry Art, a non-targeted spin is pretty good. Also, there's Zeus. Who doesn't want to make Zeus, right? Looking for a field spell that isn't going to lock us? Give Burian Untopia a try. It'll give Chaos 69 some protection and will absorb a monster when you make it via a rank up magic spell. In fact, several of the Burian cards may be worth looking into. Seventh Force, for instance, is a way to rank up Heraldry Crest if your opponent has a bigger monster than it, and Seventh Ascension can help you search out your rank up magic so you can pop off. As for a silly tech pick, the new Armored Xyz cards are gonna be a treat. We can't use Torpedo, unfortunately, rank 3 is something we do not have access to, but Fortress can be slapped on top of any rank 3 or 4 Xyz monster, ideally a Heraldry Patriarch that has just been revived by Unicorn. And it's a machine, so it actually doesn't care about the charged up heraldry restriction. After you make it, you detach the Patriarch to get full armored Xyz, potentially triggering the double foolish burial effect for a second time. Then once the restriction lifts, when you pass over to your opponent, you can flip full armor to turn Fortress into full armored Dark Lancer, which can suck up an opponent's monster when you equip it with the Patriarch in your graveyard with full armored Xyz grave effect. Come on, did you really think that goblin bikers were the only ones who were going to be making great use of these cards? So that's all the info I have about Heraldic Beast, but how do they stack up against the Nova Scale? Novelty. There are a ton of rank 4 XC strategies out there. That wasn't even a unique property at the time this deck was made. In fact, it kind of relies on Xyz being a very popular mechanic. But what sets Heraldic Beasts apart is that anti-Xyz flavoring, taking your opponent's usage of that mechanic and judo flipping it back on top of them. And for that, yeah, it is technically pretty unique, but that's the only thing the extra deck has going, and the main deck is otherwise just flavorless material spamming with little to no cohesion, so Heraldic Beasts get a 2 in novelty. Objectivity. Honestly, I can't think of a single thing this deck does that could be considered unhealthy. Negating Xyz monster effects feels very targeted, but that's hardly game-breaking in and of itself. And with Charged Up Heraldry having a pretty debilitating restriction, it's not going to be the next big Xyz engine anytime soon. HBs are getting a 5 in objectivity. Versatility. 
We touched on this a bit just now, but there's not really a demand for the Heraldic Beast engine to fix up any other deck's problems. We'll make use of all the rank 4s and rank up spells we can get our hands on, but if I ever see anyone taking in Leos into their deck, I'll know that we truly are in the darkest timeline. Heraldic Beasts get a 1 in versatility. Awesomeness. I wish I had more fond things to say about the theme. I could see some kind of future support with Xyz monsters that copy any monster effects and names, not just Xyz ones, which would in turn give Heraldry Patriarch more utility. And since friggin' gimmick puppets just got a new wave of support, it's not like the Arc Lights are allergic to legacy support. But as it stands now, a quarter of your matchups are just going to default to rank 4 toolboxing, and that's not exactly special. Heraldic Beasts get a 1 in awesomeness, which I reserve to change in the future with new support, but currently means that Heraldic Beasts get a total of 9 out of 20 on the Nova scale. And that's all I have to say about Heraldic Beasts. I hate to be so down on the theme, especially as a birthday present, but I've gotta call them as I see them. There truly is some potential here, but the deck is a victim of not just power creep, but the game growing in general. With being so focused on Xyz, Heraldics were left behind like the mechanic itself. Here's hoping this theme gets the update it so desperately needs, cause this coat of arms could certainly use a new coat of paint. But now, I want to hear what you all have to say. Are Heraldic Beasts still noble companions there to carry you through the battlefield to victory? Or are they just faded glory? And which one's your favorite? Honestly, I think Abraconway is a bop. A little messy, but I vibe with it. Let me know your favorite down below, and if you haven't already yet, please be sure to like the video if you liked it, subscribe so you don't miss a future episode, and be sure to share this video with somebody you know who loves Yu-Gi-Oh! It really does a lot to help me out. Today's episode is brought to you by my lovely patrons, as well as the lovely people over at Dragon Shield. Get the sleeves as strong as dragon scales and save 5% on your order by using the coupon code GOLDENNOVA at checkout. Today's episode was also brought to you by my lovely patrons, including this month's illustrious Quasar Commanders Sir Knight JCB and the Critic of Innocence, Nebula Navigator's Third Dynasty, Ada Basilisk, Adam Zagdell, Anansi Dragon, Andrew Newman, Kane Senpai, Christopher Fuss, Clockswork, Emony Chan, Eric, Aaron the World Breaker, Frankie, Garland Chaos, Green Knight, Gloomba331, Great Big Pillock, Krug, Hairbear, Harry, the Ominous Benefactor, Howling Zangetsu, Iron Zero, Iskander 711, Carp, Mana Charge, Marion James E. Piccata, Mega Combi, Millennia Asta, Muzuki Clark, Nathan Vig, Natiel Lee Alexander, Orozco 09096, Panther J, Rebel King Lucifer, Red Eyes Jackalo, RJ the Jank Monarch, Sammy Haim, Serenity Towns, Sky Buster Leo, That One Dumbass and the Wizard Moose, Cosmic Crusaders Alpha Sly, Almento 5010, A Random Pup, Ariel Kersey, Beren Von Titty Sprinkles, Beluga Master, Blitz Wolf, Blue Gem, Borger with a Shotgun, Callum McCann, Chaz Ghost, Childish Lamar, Dr. Reaper R.I.P., Drakenwald, Eki Bullock, Eva Padilla, Hike Boyajian, Herbal D, Ignis Heat the True Draco Slayer, In Blink, Jester Designs, Kale the Dragon, Kivon Public, King Scarlet Yu Gi Oh!, Lemon Yu Gi Oh!, Manga Pages, Marluxia is a Girl, Matt Simmons, Mick Spoofy, Michael Shimabukuro, Nitromo, Obsidian, Ramen Resurrect Chan, Shizuki Nijimura, Sophie, apparently, Steven Williamson, Taylor Seymour, Terror Top to 3, The Legendary Raven, and Zell Drekka, as well as the lovely Starlight Explorers you see on screen now. If you'd like to help me in my journey to cover all of Yu-Gi-Oh's archetypes, get my videos early, be a part of these credits and other awesome perks, it would mean the world to me if you checked out the link to my Patreon in the description or consider joining as a YouTube member. And if you'd like to see what a real Rank 4 strategy can do, check out this video I made covering Zodiacs. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Buh bye But I am once again asking you for more cohesive support. And now we have my perfect Bernie Sanders impression on the internet. Number Chaos 69, Chaos Nice, Heraldry Crest of Horror is a rank five, rank five. What are we, what are we, skating? That's not it.